Sarah. Yes, what do you think of uh, the current theocratic control and theocratic prohibitions and medical research so that it is illegal in the United States to do medical research without the approval of so-called ethicists, all of whom are religious figures. It's a system created by Leon Cass, uh, who is an explicit opponent of life extension. Yep. And now we have something that would have given the cardinals who imprisoned Galileo a wet dream about power because now the theocrats have total power over medical research in the United States and in most of the world. Well, I mean, I think, I think the, the tragedy here is that this is something that both the left and the right agree on. So the Leon Cassas of the world, who's from the right, who was, who was Bush's appointee to the Biotech Commission, uh, I forget it was in the, uh, in the 2000s, and came out with a scathing report about how life extension was bad, you know why life extension is bad? It'll bankrupt Social Security. No, but even worse than Social Security, well, why is life extension bad? It's going to cause massive numbers of divorce. I mean, you can live with a woman for 50 years, <laughs> but 100? Give me a break. I'd live with you 100. Um, <laughs> But that was in the report. This is a scientific report about the evil of life extension. And he's worried about divorce. Who the f cares? I want to live to be 200. You're worried about me getting divorced? I can't think of anything more evil than that. So yes, Adam, I, I agree. I, and I hope, my hope is that while we are descending into this nuttiness, insanity, that there are going to be places in the world that won't do that. The people doing uh, gene therapy studies elsewhere in the world that are not allowed to be done in the United States. And I think, you know, so I'm a patriot. I love America. I, I, I love the idea of America. I love the founding. I, I moved here because this was the place I wanted to live. I love everything about this country. But you know what? If, if this country becomes nuts as it, it, is, is, it is becoming, then there are other places in the world to live. Now, I'm on the border now, right? Because <laughs> I live in Puerto Rico, which is a leg in and a leg out, right? And there's a reason for that, because it's crazy here. And so I, I, I'm, I'm optimistic in the sense that I think the, 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 the striving towards the betterment of life will revive somewhere else, even if it dies some, to some extent here. There will be somewhere else where they'll allow this research and it'll keep going. And I encourage those of you in the science to look for other places that have better regulatory regimes where you can do this, where you, where you can do the kind of science that is going to extend human life. Because given the state of science, there's no reason, I think, that we couldn't live dramatically longer lives than what we, again, Lee would know more about this and Adam would know a bit more about this, but it strikes me from the little I know and from the people I've talked to that we could be living much, much longer, healthy lives than we do today. And what really is the barrier to that is the FDA. And, but I think those scientific breakthroughs are gonna happen somewhere. And we are going to, well, at least the young people in this audience are gonna benefit. Again. The real tragedy, I mean, again, I, I mentioned two tragedies of the world in which we live in today. It's what could be. We could already have those technologies, if not for the FDA, and not for the regulatory state and, 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 and everything else. We could already have it. We could already be living there. And what it does to individual human beings, the fact that they live with altruism. But it's, it's yeah, it's, it's the parallel universe. It makes our job, by the way, much more difficult to convince people that there, that there could be a parallel universe in which we're all living much better, happier, more prosperous lives than we do. Right? It's hard enough to show them Venezuela, right? a real concrete example of the evil of socialism. Never mind, oh, but there's this potential. You have to have an imagination to see the potential. You don't go for altruism and charity and do good and liberal and health. No. And conservative. You might as well add it all. You don't like the conservatives either? No. 
Well, Not today's start. conservatives. Sorry. Uh, I want to help people. I want to do good for other people. What's so bad about that? Nothing. If you do it by your own choice, and if it's not your primary aim in life, and if you don't regard it as a moral virtue, on those conditions, it's fine to help people if you want to. Why, isn't, why can't I think of it as a moral virtue? I mean, can't I take some vows for myself for doing all these good things? Because that would be cannibalism. Because that would mean that you preach altruism, which means not merely kindness, but self-sacrifice. It means that you place the welfare of others above your own. That you live for others, for the sake of helping them, and that justifies your life. That's immoral, according to my morality. Uh, I don't understand why you have to be so harsh in your, def in your evaluation of those people. Why, why call it immoral? Why don't you just say... Why why don't you say it's a waste of time? Why, why pass judgment on me? Because look at the state of the world today. Yeah. And you cannot be harsh enough on those who created it. And those who created it are the philosophers of altruism. It's those who preach self-sacrifice, selflessness, self-abnegation, all the anti-self theories, which means anti-man. All those who demand man's sacrifice, they have succeeded, and yeah. look at the results in the world. That's a